I was never taught a systematic way to play and understand chords, so it took me many, many years to figure it out on my own. And I just don't want that to happen to you, which is why I'm putting together this series of lessons on guitar chords. Stick with me throughout each lesson. By the time we're done, you won't need a book like this, because we'll know how to form all these chords, and more importantly, how and when to use them. Now, in order to get started, we're going to need four things. First, we'll learn how to read a chord diagram. Second, we'll learn some chords. Third, we'll learn the proper way to play chords and get some tips and techniques on how to play them better. And fourth, we'll learn a couple songs that use these chords so that we can actually practice them. Let's get started. With a chord diagram, you get a visual representation of a guitar's fretboard when you're actually holding a guitar vertically. Here's an example of a chord diagram. Comparing it to the guitar, the vertical lines represent the six strings on the guitar, and the horizontal lines represent the frets on a guitar. Let's see how to read it. All right above the diagram, you have the name of the chord, which is kind of obvious, but it's important as that name essentially explains the note choices on the diagram. Next, look to the right of the diagram. If there's a notation indicating a specific fret, then it's telling you how high up the neck you should go to place your fingers. And if there's nothing on the right of the diagram, then it's referring to the initial frets, which are right by the guitar nut. As you might have guessed, the darkened circles represent where your fingers should be placed to play the chord. Sometimes you'll find chord diagrams where there will be a number inside the circle, with each number representing a finger. One for the index finger, two for the middle finger, three for the ring finger, and four for the pinky finger, and sometimes you'll see a T for the thumb. And this is to give you a suggestion of what fingers to use to form the chord. Now, I'll just use the darkened circles, and I'll verbally recommend fingerings to play, but if you try a different fingering and it works for you, I say go ahead and use it. Finally, if you see on the top of the diagram an X or an O, such as on this diagram, the X means to not play that string, and the O means to play that string open or without pressing a fret on that string. All right, for this lesson, we just want to become comfortable with learning and playing chords. So let's get to these open chords. And they're called open because they include at least one unfretted string. Now with these chords alone, you'll be able to play thousands of songs, and I'm not kidding. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to run through these chords fairly quickly because you've got the diagrams, plus you can also rewind to get these chords down. All right, the first chord is a G chord, and I'm going to give you two ways to play it. The first way is with three fingers, like this. I use my middle finger, my first finger, and my ring finger. But the second way takes actually all four fingers, where your ring finger now, it plays on the second string, and your little finger comes in to play on the first string. Actually, if you can get that particular G chord down, it might serve you better in the future, but go ahead and practice both. This is a C chord. Now, I play the first finger on the second string, the middle finger on the fourth string, and the ring finger on the fifth string. And by the way, I only strum, you only want to strum five strings, not the sixth string. I mean, if you do, you're not going to make a mistake because this note is actually in a C. But it sounds better playing these five. The next chord is a D chord, and you'll want to strum the top four strings. I use my first finger here, my middle finger on the first string, and my ring finger on the second string. Now you can actually get away with strumming five strings because the A is a note in the key in the D chord, but it sounds better if you just play these four. 
The next chord is related to the D chord. It's called a D7 chord. It's sort of like the D chord mirrored this way. Middle finger on the third string, uh, first finger on the second string, and ring finger on the first string is what I recommend. Again, play the top four strings. <laughs> The next chord is also a D chord. It's called a D minor chord. And it looks like this D chord, but it takes this note and puts it over here on the first fret. I would play it with my middle finger on the third string, my ring finger on the second string, and first finger on the first string. Again, play four strings. The next chord is an A chord. And you'll actually take these three fingers, keep them in this order, and put them on the middle, I'm sorry, on the second fret, on the fourth, third, and second strings, and strum five. The next chord is just like it, but you take your middle finger off so it makes it easy to play, and that is called an A7. The next chord is also related. It's called an A minor. But here you'll kind of change up your fingering. Middle finger on the fourth uh, string, second fret. Ring finger on the fourth string, I'm sorry, the third string, second fret. And then first finger on the second string, first fret. And also strum five. <laughs> the last two chords we'll learn today are an E. It sort of looks like the A minor that we did earlier, but we're moving them this way. So middle finger on the fifth string, second fret, ring finger on the fourth string, second fret, and first finger on the third string, first fret, and you'll play all six strings. The last chord is an E minor, and you take this first finger off and you've got it. I'll play all six strings. Okay, let's talk about technique and tips, and I'll give you seven techniques and tips to help you be able to play these chords uh, clearly um, and accurately. First, you want to hold the guitar correctly when you're practicing your chords. You know, some people, when they're trying to form the chords, they want to see their finger, so they'll put the guitar flat like this. But automatically, that makes it much tougher to play anything with your fingers. So, you know, don't be tempted to do that. Hold the guitar correctly when you're forming these chords. Second, when you're playing a single note with a finger, you generally want to point your finger in such a way that you're using the ball or the tip of your finger, not the pad of your finger. And when you are pressing down on a string, you're not touching any other string. And you want to make sure that the strings sound clear, one at a time with no buzzing. So here's an example of what I mean. Okay, let's take a C chord. So what I'm going to do is actually try to point my fingers as much as possible so that I'm not touching any other string next to you know, my fingers, only the finger they're assigned to. And when I practice this, I want to play each string one at a time to hear how it sounds. All right, all five of them sounded clear and when I play them together, now I've got a beautiful C chord. But what can happen is, if you don't use the balls of your fingers, or the, the very tips, and you try to lie them down, you can get this. Something like that, which of course sounds terrible. So you need to press using the balls of your fingers, not touching any other string, and make sure you get a clear sound. Work on it till you get that clear sound. Now, along these lines, if your fingernails are too long, it will make it nearly impossible to play using the tips of your fingers. So, quick tip, 
cut your fingernails on your chord playing hand. And by the way, it might get a bit uncomfortable on the tips of your fingers at first, and that's okay, that's natural. Don't get discouraged. We all experienced it. You eventually will develop calluses on the tips of your fingers, and this will make it easier. So don't sacrifice technique when playing chords. All right, third tip. Once you learn a chord, practice taking your fingers off and then putting them back on all at the same time. I'll show you in a second. Go slowly. Make sure the chord sounds perfect each time. And this is going to take a little time, but trust me, it will be worth it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's say I'm playing a D chord. Now here's the idea. I want to take my fingers, once I form the chord, just pull them all off at the same time, maybe go up a quarter inch, and then put them right back down. Make sure everything sounds clear. So I'll try it again. I just take them off slowly, about a quarter inch, and then they all come down at the same time, not one at a time, same time. Okay, once I've got a quarter inch down, let's go higher, maybe an inch. So I take them all off. I try to make sure they all come up at the same time, and then they all come down at the same time. Strum, make sure there's no buzzing. Once I've got that down, let's go higher, maybe where I'm actually opening up my hand, and they all come down at the same time. When you can do that with all these chords, then you're going to be able to switch chords quite rapidly. And that's the whole point of this exercise, to make sure they come down at the same time, not one at a time. Because when you switch chords rapidly, you're going to have to form very, very quickly. And so this idea of practicing whatever chord it is where they all come down and hit the right note Trust me, it will pay dividends later. Work on that. And here's another little thing I used to do, and it might work for you. When you don't have a guitar with you, you can still practice your chords by using your arm. I mean, if you look at your arm, it's about the same size as a guitar fretboard. So what I used to do, maybe someone else was driving, I sat in the car, or you know, I'm just at work, <laughs> but I have a break. Pull your arm up and use it as a fretboard and start practicing your chords because this is going to help you remember the shape of the chord. And you can also practice where your fingers come down all at the same time. Give it a whirl. Okay, once you've done this, tip number four, now you need to do it again, but this time by switching between two chords and placing your fingers on the fretboard all at the same time. Now, take that slow. This is going to take a little bit of time to do two chords. But once you get that done, do two more chords, two different chords. And the idea is you put your fingers all on the guitar at the same time, play each string so there's no buzzing. You know you're playing your, your fingers correctly. You know you're playing your chords correctly. And eventually you want to add more than two chords, maybe do three, maybe do four. Work on all ten that we've, I've showed you. And when you're able to get that down, wow, you're getting, you're getting there. Here's an example. I might take a G and a C. So G, and when I switch to the C, I'm not going to go one like that. I'm not going to do one at a time. I'm going to think the chord shape and switch at the same time come back to the G, switch to the same, you know, at the same time, coming down on the fretboard at the same time. That's going to take a little doing. But... It's going to be really cool once you get it. It just takes a little practice, and you can get it. All right, once you've memorized each chord and you're playing them clearly every time, and you're able to switch between chords pretty quickly, then I'd like you to practice playing these chords without looking at the fretboard. Yeah, that's right. If you have to look up 
or you have to look away or you have to blindfold your fold yourself or turn off the lights don't look at the fretboard and this will be challenging at first but stick with it it's really going to be important and it's just going to make a big difference down the road because it accomplishes a couple of things first of all it will force you to visualize the chord that you're playing in your mind and that's always important and then translate that information to the fretboard secondly it will help you become more familiar with how your guitar feels you know where the nut is where the frets are the distance where your arm is relationship to your body when actually you're playing a chord see you're not depending on sight anymore you're depending on feel as an example um, might be something like this where the idea is your hands are so used to where you know they should be that you can feel where the chord goes all right tip number six look for chords that share the same finger in the same place and when this happens you can use that finger as an anchor to make switching the chords easier let me give you a couple examples okay let's say I was switching between you know, the G chord that has these four fingers on it and the D chord which has the same finger on the third fret second string so now I can take this chord and leave that finger there while I put my fingers on the other strings that should help me to switch between these two a lot easier because I've got this anchor that's going to help me form these chords. Another example might be the C chord. And then watch this. If I take this ring finger, let these two be anchors and put it underneath the middle finger, I've got an A minor. And then I take it right back off, put it back on the third string fifth fret I'm sorry fifth string third fret and I've got a C there you go give it a shot okay last tip keep your guitar where you can see it and if that means investing in a guitar stand if you don't have one then it's a good investment you see if you see it you can pick it up and practice and if you don't out of sight out of mind right the more you keep the guitar in your hands the more comfortable you'll be with it and if you do it enough it just becomes an extension of your body trust me something I used to do quite a bit was grab my guitar when watching TV especially watching TV by myself but this can work if someone else is in the room and here's what would happen when a commercial comes on practice your chords. If someone else is in the room, you can mute the strings with your right hand and just practice forming the chords while you're just sitting there watching TV. Now you're able to get two things done, right? But if you're watching by yourself, commercial comes on, practice. Play the chords. Play them quickly. Let your fingers come down all at the same time. That's just another way to get the guitar in your hands and to practice. So we're going to learn a couple songs so that you can practice some of the chords you've learned in the context of a song. And here are two very popular songs that you can use to practice your chords. All right, the first is Happy Birthday to You. Everybody knows this song, right? And I wrote it three different ways in three different keys so that you can use more chords. For example, in the key of G, what I want you to work on, what you should concentrate on, is your left hand, the chords. This is a study of chords. Your right hand is just not that important for this study. So every time you see a chord, you can take your thumb or your fingers or a pick, just strum it once. When you see the chord, you just strum. You don't worry about any picking patterns or any finger picking patterns or anything like that. It's your left hand that matters. So, uh, happy birthday in, we'll play it in G. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Just 
that easy on the right hand. The key is the left hand. All right, the second song, same idea, it's Jingle Bells, and I wrote it in the key of G. Same idea, you just play one strum each time you see the chord. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Okay, just that simple. Your right hand is not important for this study. Get your left hand down. All right, I put PDFs of the chord charts in the description so that you can download them at your convenience and practice. Okay, well done. Now, once you've mastered this lesson, you'll be ready for lesson number two, where we'll begin to learn what notes are in chords and why. And that lesson alone will give you the knowledge to form hundreds of different chords on your own. So click on the notification bell because you don't want to miss that lesson. Okay, thanks for swinging by and for learning with me. Please like the video and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.